Okay. Welcome back, everyone. We're doing the box model and inline block uh, in week two, day two's afternoon lecture. So to continue our CSS lesson, uh, we have CSS properties, colors here. We have uh, different ways to note colors. We can write the word black, white, red, green, blue, magenta. We can write it by RGB, red, green, blue. We can write it by something called the hexadecimal color system. So all, all colors on our screen, all the pixels that we have are a combination of red, green, and blue. And they have a color code and they have a color name. So we can just identify them by those three things. Okay. Um, and as you can see, when you start to enter a color, it gives you a whole list of colors here and their color code right next to it. If you just type in a letter in the alphabet, you'll see, I think they're all listed. If you just type in color and then colon. And you can select your own color here as well. So if I, if I start with, I want a green color, but I don't know exactly what green it is. Okay, I'll just choose a green. And then I'll go here on the color spectrum and then move this around. That's mostly how I would choose a color. Um, there's also an extension you can get on Google Chrome that's a color picker. A uh, color picker. So if color you, picker. Yeah, it's one of those. You can pick color from the screen. So I want that color gray. So now it has it. Copy to clipboard. And then you can take that RGB 128, 128, 128, add it there. So, um, okay, we have the way to, to choose a color. Let's go over some text rules here. We have ways to align text on a page. So I'll go ahead and add an H1 here. H1, hello world. I am sharing my screen, right? Screen, screen, screen. You guys would interrupt me if I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to say text align left. Well, it's already aligned on the left. We'll just copy this rule here. Enter it in, comment it out. And if we take a look, copy the path, enter it in. We see hello world. We remove that comment and allow it to go back in text align center. Refresh our page. Now we see it's in the middle. If we want to make it go to the right, we say text align 
Right. Okay. Now, um, we have ways to decorate text as well. If we say text decoration underline to our H1 tag. And we see here it's on the right and it's underlined. Make it back to center. Okay. So let's add some font style italic. This slants here. Font style normal. Well, if we add normal, then it doesn't do anything. If it already has some font style attached to it, uh, if you want to make it normal, then take away the default there. Um, let me give an example here. Font weight bold. Doesn't change much. It depends on the font style on on that. Uh, it depends on the font cell whether font weight bold will, will, will work or not on it. You can see here, it didn't make much of a difference. Um, maybe it's a conflict of rules. No, I think what it is is the H1 is already font weight bold by default in its default rules. So if it was... Maybe a P tag instead. Hello world. Font size. Two five pixels. Oh, we have to make this a now if we now if we apply this rule font weight bold there it is yeah so the h1 had a default ball uh font weight to it now we can apply bold to a p tag and it will do this enhance the view of it okay we have different font families as well. Font family sans serif. Monospace. Hello world. Font family cursive. All right, so there we go, different font families. Any questions about these topics that we've gone over here? Different font families, different colors. These are the basic things we'll go over to start with and then we'll get into the heart of the lesson in a second.
Let me go ahead and. I have a question real quick. Yeah. So you see where at the bottom of the page it says font weight. And it has like the additional numbers 100 through like 900. Yeah. Is it is it explaining like instead of putting or typing in ball or normal light or bald, you can just type in that number and it'll be like the bolder it is. Yeah, the the higher the number, the bolder it is. Okay, okay, yeah, that's that's about it. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's a good question. Um, we can try that right now. Let's see font weight. I think it hits a limit that it can reach boldness. Thank you, because you already had font weight bold. It's not doing anything. You know, with the, the... And you didn't have the pixels. I don't think it has... I don't think it's pixels. No, it's not pixels. Or maybe 900 is bold, and then if you go to like 200, 300, or 400, it'll be lighter. Mm -hmm. Maybe 900 is like, yeah, never mind. He just said it. <laughs> no, I think definitely it, it lightened up just a bit. So there's such a subtle difference between 100 and 900. No, it didn't even change at all. So no, I saw the difference. It was very yeah, it changed very, very, very little. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the difference. It was just very, yeah, little. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you're right. There is it. So maybe it depends. Like what if we change the pixel size here? We change the font weight now. Yeah, you definitely notice it more. Okay. It depends on the font also, I'm sure. Okay. Well, um there are font family, so let's take a pull on this, how we're understanding this, and then we'll move on. Cool. Okay. Styling. So now that we've entered this section here, we're going to be going over how we look at a page and how our eyes should understand the rules that we can apply to make this happen. Okay. So we have this styling assignment. It's a practice assignment. But let's think about how we would approach this. We have three divs, right? We have a black one. We have a purple one. We have a blue one. We have text in all three. What's the difference between each of these here in their rules? What's the rule here that we need to apply that we demonstrated earlier in the lesson? The text alignment? Yeah, that's it. Text align. Text align. Different font sizes. You put the underline. And text decoration. Text decoration. Okay, think about now your screen as 
a chopping block that you will be dividing squares on, okay? We now have width and height. So when we want to think of a div, we can think about of uh, how many, you know, width and height that is square on your page. So if we say div, and I say div width 40 pixels height 40 pixels background color red now i have a small <laughs> too small let's make it 400 Okay, we have this red box here determined by 400 pixels by 400 pixels. As you can see, uh, 40 pixels wasn't much. Make sure that when you're working also that your zoom ratio is at 100%. You're not going over or below to so get the actual pixel view. Okay, so now I've cut a red box on my screen on this page that I can... Uh, at least move by moving the window. But no, you can, you can, it stays right there. You want to uh, change the width by relative to its container, then there's also percent. So if I say 100%, by 100%. Uh, I think it disappears. It gets so big. Okay. Um, let's see here. 90. What's it generating the percentage from, though? Of its, if it's a uh, container. I think what I'm doing here is I'm just making things non-understandable for it to, to... I'm not breaking any rules. Yeah, don't define a div within a body just like this and give it a percentage. Give it a definite pixel amount. At least uh, a height is better. So if you say height, uh, 30%. No, you can't define it. Is your style sheet linked? Yeah, here it is. Um, if it has a definite, let's see, height by pixels, and a width, Thirty percent. Then it will then work. <laughs> okay. I guess you can't have it both on height and width. So thirty percent will work with relative yeah, that, to the width of the whole page. That makes if, sense because I figured it. It's like a percentage of each other, like one of the other side. Well, Maybe. I was trying to say both to be a uh, hundred percent relative to the width and height of the window at the current window view. But, but it looks like it's referencing itself. From yeah. Here. Well, no, it's referencing its container, I would think, because when I say 30%, it's only going to 30% of the width of this container here, of this, oh, of this view. If said. I shorten it, okay. it shortens as well. Ah, uh, okay. So, if you have a definite height, 100 pixels, then it'll stay there. If I say 100 pixels width and 30% height,
height doesn't work that way. So you yeah, have to make I've always it. Had, yeah, I've always had to put uh, definite pixels for height. Okay. I've never tried to play much with percentage. I always just stick with pixels unless there's a different way around. And there is different ways around. So we'll get to explain that later. But um, so now you're dealing with pixel mounts and, and percentages mixed with pixel mounts. And so we have... Um, other units of dividing the page, we have point, we have EM, and we have percent. And here is a measurement to say if I want 8 PT, or if I want 12 pixels, the rest here will be equivalent, 0.75 EM or 75%. So um, we also have this property overflow, scroll. So let's say this div here. Has five lorem. And this five lorem in the div, we can say, Overflow scroll. Now, if we want to scroll through this here, we have text that would expand to a larger height than allowable given the dimensions already of a height of 100 pixels. Wait, did you do that? Uh, you lost me. I think that happened so fast. So the overflow is on the entire div? Just Overflow one. is on the entire div, yeah. So what does overflow actually mean? Overflow means that when there's an overflow of stuff on the inside, okay, you can scroll now through this to view it all. That's okay. why it says scroll. So with the overflow material, now you can scroll through it. And what other options do you have besides scroll? Oh, it is. Okay, you can hide it. Okay. So anything that would flow over is now not there unless you inspect it. Visible. Well, you still can't see it because the text is white. Background the color is white. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what you want to do with the overflow is up to you, but a scroll would allow you for the ability to move through it. Okay. Um, you can also set an image as a background. So let's look for a cool background image. Okay.
Okay, here it is now. I call this picture lake. So now if I want to apply that background rule, I'll take this here, copy it into my div. And I'll go ahead and remove this here, do the dot slash and choose the lake. And it's gone. I think it's this color here. I think I have to actually put a definite URL here. Background property can modify background with the element on one line. This is a shorter version than uh, splitting each property on its own line of code. The color can be defined using hex, RGB, or semantic code. Um, let me try one more way of doing it. Let's see here. Copy image address. That in here. Hmm. Oh, maybe it has to do with this here. There we are. If I, I gave it enough width and height for it to be visible now. So there it is. And we said to it, no repeat, fixed center. So without this rule, no repeat. It would look like this. It would just keep copying. If we say no repeat, it sticks to the middle. Uh, center of what it is. No repeat, fixed. We remove this fixed. It would go to the fullest dimension that it's able to go. And if we increase the width, then it'll be allowed to be expanded. But since this here is a thousand pixels width, um, this is going to be fixed to the view of the uh, div that it's in. So if I were to remove the fix, it would go to the full view of the whole image. And center is what puts it in the center of the page. Because this div is in the body, it's in the center of the body. Without it, it goes back up there. Okay, so with with that rule, you can find out how to make a, well, we'll learn rules to make a background image expand for the whole page. Okay, so here we have background image URL, background position center, background size auto, background 
repeat, no repeat. So we went over these rules. Um, we also have a way to create buttons, to put borders on buttons. Let's create a button here. There we are. There's our button. So what happened there? What whether was the div too big that we couldn't see the button or? Yeah, it was so big that the button was was being pushed out of view. Oh, okay. Um there. There's our button. Hello world. Um, we can add different types of borders. We can, um, let's see what this does. It just gives a dynamic effect there. Not that interesting to me, but it's there. So there's different ways to style something very subtly. I think it's because it's one pixel. I think let's let's make it 10. See the effect. Okay, how about 100? What does the word groove there mean? Groove. With style and color, it's just a, it's a, just a, it's a style of. Oh, like the color of the actual, like, um, border, I guess? Like what the color combination would be in a groove of different colors. What they could add up to that color that we're looking for. So if I change this to red. It's finding some colors together mm -hmm. that would match up to this level of red that I'm looking oh, for. Okay. That's kind of the texture, I guess. These two colors together match up to add up to this color of yellow that I'm looking for. One's brighter, one's darker. So, um, okay, border radius. Let's see what this does. Border radius to our button. The corners got a little bit more rounded there. So if I said 50, now they're more rounded here at the edges. If I say 50%, you'll see now it's a circle. It's like the, <laughs> it's like an O. It's a beautiful O. Uh, wow. 
It's the most interesting thing I've created. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like an eye that is just staring at your soul with this hello world uh, at the center of its pupil. Okay. All right. So with the rounding corners, the number of pixels or the percentage we're telling it is basically the distance from the corner that it starts rounding, right? Yes. And it says, I want you to take off like that half off 50%. So it will, what if we so if I've got, 100%? If I've got, uh, it'll do no different actually. So if you 10 stay, pixels, then it'll count 10 pixels from the corner and start rounding at that point. Um, this may yeah. be getting to. This okay. gets, see, around 30 pixels, it starts cutting off that much. Okay. At 40%, it's at that much. And at 50%, it's pretty much already just like a complete circle. There we go. It's like a a banana on the right, but what's that on the left? It's like a handle or something. It's Maybe. a banana in shadows. <laughs> I'm copywriting that that uh thing I'd made here. It'll be my my first pixel art. Um Okay, did we understand that? Let's let's start a poll. How we applied background colors, borders, border radiuses. Um also how we did some of the color groups. Mm. All right, well then let's get started. We have here a box model and all the content, all the things that we write on our page, all the divs that we create have this element to them. You know, just how like the human body has different layers. There's the skin, bones, the inner organs. Okay. There's a layer here of parameter areas that we can control. There's the margin, the border, the padding, and the content. So if you have text that it's like 20 pixels high, and that's the content. The padding is the space around that text that you have there in that main content area that allows for, well, let's, let's give an example now. So I'm going to say this div here. This one above, we said 100 pixels by 100 pixels, and it was going to be, let's just say the whole body has a background color of blue. Okay, so now we're in a body of blue. We say the divs on the page are going to be 400 by 400 pixels. Oh, 
Oh, and we want them to have a background color of red. So there's our box. And um, we want to uh, say we want a div inside this div. We'll call this one class equals inner div. And we'll say dot inner div is going to have a height of 300 pixels, a width of 300 pixels, background color of white. Okay. So just as a frame of reference now. If I increase the margin on the div, if I say, based on this box model, the margin is the space around. If I increase the margin, let's see what happens. Margin, 300 pixels. This is on the red one. 300 pixels is too much of an example. Uh, let's say 30 pixels. Thirty pixels have now been added to the edges around in the red box. Uh, there's a reason why this white box doesn't have any edge at the top, and we'll go over that that uh, specific reason later. But around the edges, there's at least 30 pixels on each side. If I say one uh, margin left, 30 pixels, okay. It'll just go specific from the left, 30 pixels only. If I say margin top. We're looking at the position of the red relative to the blue around it. So it went 30 pixels from the top. If we say 50 now, it goes down further. because it's now only affecting it from the top. So now 200 from the top or 100, say 600. Goes way down there. Okay, so now if I add it on all sides, It pushes it to an edge here and let's inspect the page. If we right click and click inspect here and move this to the right, this is the div that we're working with. It has a, uh, if you click it, you'll see here, Height should be 400 pixels. Width should be 400 pixels. The margin is 200 pixels. So if we change the margin here, we can see what ex exactly it is. Okay, and since the background isn't like an absolute size. Essentially our margin is just moving us away from the top and away from the left. Yeah, well, 
Th this one in particular, I think in this case, dibs wrapped around. When I increase it to 150, the height increases by so many pixels as well. When I delete it and go to 10, that it then it ignores its direction relative to the top as well. So let's let's go over uh, something on another website here. If I go to Wikipedia and I in, if I click any div on this page, if I click right click and I click inspect and I click this icon on the top left and I click this div here or I hover over any div, you see it has the blue area highlighted that I'm hovering over. Then that green area is like a border that's wrapping it. And then this yellow area is like a final border, but we should think of that as like the force field around it, the main content. And this, uh, this green wrapper here, which is called the padding. So think of like this as a package that you're receiving and you have the main content, which is the blue area, the stuff that you are, the, the item itself, this green area here is this sort of uh, padding around it. And then the yellow area is the space that's not occupied at all. It's empty. But it's still space in the box. So it's within the whole parameter of the box. Okay, so um, if we click this here, We can change now here that the measurements are in EM. So if I say 15 EM, I know that. Nine EM increases it to that height. Past a certain height doesn't work. Okay. Well, the point of what I'm trying to say is that there's a there's a space here margin. There's a border that's the the padding that you would increase. So, like a hot air balloon, if you're increasing the space on the inside, you're increasing the border. You're inflating that area. Uh, that is that is the padding. The border is it just this is another element, another um, space between it's like the actual fence around the, the property. Okay. Padding is just like the backyard. The content would be something like the house. Okay. If you have a large wide fence, then I guess that counts as your space as well. The margin is the area, you know, the street around the house. Okay, but it doesn't belong to the house, but it, it technically it adds to the view of it. So um, if you find out how to, to move these around in a document, you'll be able to um, create things using HTML and CSS. And that's what we'll be doing in the next hour. We'll be using height with margin padding um, and using just these rules with also this rule inline block. Okay, this is the only rule we've introduced as far as styling. So let's give an example of how this works. I'm gonna take away this inner div. I'm gonna have two divs here. This is one, this is two. Now we have two red blocks here. We want them to be side by side next to each other. So we apply a rule to both to say inline block.
Oh, display. Inline block. Mm -hmm. Now they'll be side by side next to each other in the same row. Normally block items, remember P tags, divs, um, H1 tags, they're naturally block items. So they will take up the entire row of their occupying height unless you say, I want you to be inline block with something else that's on the same level as it. In this case, I said all divs on the page should be inline block. So this targeted both at the same time. If they had a different name, and I said class equals left, and I made this target just dot left. The second one would disappear because it didn't get any of the rules. So if we say dot right, I copied everything here, added it to a right, except inline block on the right one. They'll still be stacked on top of each other because they have to be applied both at the same time. So as soon as I apply inline block to the right, should go back on here. So they'll be horizontal next to each other if they both get display inline block. And the distance between those blocks is determined by the margin. This margin is adding to the to the space. Yes. Let's okay, inspect. thank you. This cube here has this even though its main content is being taken up by that red area there, 400 by 400 pixels, we've given it a margin of 200 pixels. You see here, margin 200 pixels. What would happen if we change it to padding? Any ideas? We'll learn the difference right now. So padding increases the space on the inside. Okay, if I say display inline block to both of them, even though, oh, now they will, if they have that space. If I decrease the, the width of the browser view, then it disappears. But if I expand it to a view where they can both fit on the same row, they will. Okay, so we have display inline block, and we have ways to increase the inside, inflate it, Increase space on the outside, like a force field. We can um, remove it all together and just say inline block, be next to each other. Remove the padding on this one. We'll see. This is what the one on the right still has its padding. Okay. If I make margin on the right one, if I say margin left, 50 pixels, then it'll create that space, 50 pixels, 250, it moves that much. Okay. Hey, so, Josh, real fast before you move on, I, I know you said you didn't want to talk about this yet, but in the core assignment, it wants us to put a space at the top um like when you're putting a block inside of a block 
we have to um, have a space in the margin at the top. Um, mm -hmm. And you were saying you didn't want to go over that yet, but but it's in our core assignment. I, I didn't know how to do it. Which core assignment? The plotting our blocks. Oh, all right. Good, good. Okay, so let's take this one here. And plotting our blocks. The rule that you're wanting to apply is in here. These imagine these green blocks in this outer container with the white border. If you apply the rule vertical align top, you will let them go to the very top. They'll float to the top of the space that they're allowed to be in. Vertical align top is, is the rule that you'll need to apply when you have them as inline blocks. Only if it, they're inline blocks will this one work. So you apply vertical align top while they're inline blocks and they will float to the very top of their container. Okay, I can give an example of this. Here we are. Now I want to apply some vertical line top to make those ones go to the top. So I'll put that in the P tag. Oop, didn't copy it. But I'll just type it in. Vertical align top. And up they go. So that's vertical line top on some boxes to make them float to the top of the space that they're allowed to be in. So that's because the height uh, is not really affected here. I said height, 500 pixels, then we'll see them drop if I take off this rule. I'm just adding to the height of the. Okay, so I won't struggle through this. You guys see what I'm doing. Um, what I want to make you guys do now is, well, I don't, not that if I want to or not, it's part of the curriculum. We have to uh, join up in groups and figure out ways we can use these rules that we've just gone over to uh, make some flags. So has anyone heard of the term Bex, Bexlaw? Oh, there we go. There we go. I can never say it. Go ahead, please, someone. Kaya, how do you say the word? I'm sorry? Starts with the V, ends with ology. Oh, Vexillology. Vexillology. There we go. All right. See, you see my struggle now. Um, let's let's end with a poll here before we go into groups. And also, like, um, how do we feel about the topics we're getting introduced into? Okay. So vexillology. Vexillology. The study of the history, symbolism, and usage of flags, or by extension, any interest in flags in general. The word is a synthesis of Latin word vexillum, 
and the Greek suffix logia. Okay. Interest in flags. Flags. Okay. So what we're going to do is find some flags and we're going to recreate them doing CSS. Uh, let's yeah. find a, Let's find a flag. Look at this one. This one, we import an image. We put it in this top div. Let's see if we can. So we have the square, we find the height. There's a border radius as well. Well, this is not really a fair picture of the flag. Um, we have one div here. We have this blue div. We can add some margin, top and margin bottom. And then we have this third div. Inside the top div, we put an image. We just control now the colors, orange, this color orange, and we would have this flag. It's these just one, two, three divs stacked on top of each other with the top div having an image in it. Um, what about... Japanese flag. Okay. It's this rectangle with a giant red circle in it. This would be a little bit more difficult, these stripes. What if we want to make a... Um, French flag. I see three inline blocks right next to each other. One blue, one white, one red. Or a red and blue block with a margin left on the red block, pushing it left from the blue one so many pixels. How would you do the American flag? Here we have a giant rectangle. We have a container with the blue one in the middle of it. And in this container, we have these divs, red, white, red, white. This one would be a row of stars. So you'd have to find some image of a star or something or figure out how to make a div the shape of a five-pointed star. Either way, that's something you can CSS. I've never seen a group that could take on the challenge and fully complete this one yet. So I'm waiting to see that group. Um, but you don't have to choose this. So you have to de determine among yourselves um, how to create the flag that you're hoping to make. Okay. Um, you can pick any flag. It doesn't have to be from a country. And then if you pick something unique, now explain why you've chosen it. Um, any other flag ideas? Anyone has a flag that they want to look up? German flag? Black, red, yellow. Or if you find this symbol, put it in the middle. Um, what else? Any other flags? Pick some pick something challenging. Um what if I say random flag here? 
Yeah, there's different things you can choose. This, look at this one here. This would be a good challenge, the sun. Something with lots of angles in it. Uh, the Jamaican flag, that would be a good challenge. This would be a good challenge here, whatever this flag is. Try making a cross with that border with the stripe in the back. Okay. So, all right, let's get started. Um, that is the end of the lesson. Does anyone have any questions about what we're learning so far? Okay. Then I'll go ahead and pause the recording and we'll go ahead and join its breakout rooms. So just to be clear. Okay, we're back everyone. Let's do a flag presentation. So we'll go in order whether we got to our target goal, we wanna present what we have. So let's have uh, someone volunteer for their group. They can show the flag. All right, I'll go. Um, okay. Yeah, we did, uh, we ended up doing three flags. Okay. Show the screen. So this one is for Japan. Yep, we got Japan here. Uh, what do you want me to kind of? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about the history of the flag, where it was made. <laughs> uh, so just expand it to the full view. <laughs> yep, you know, it comes from uh, Japan during the Edo period. Um, it's probably somewhere near Mount Fuji is where they first designed it. A couple of samurais back in the day just decided, you know, the sun rises here and looks pretty good, so we might as well make our country uh, <laughs> follow suit. <laughs> so there you go. Land of the rising sun. And then <clears throat> we also did Poland. I think this is Poland. Okay. I don't know anything about Poland. <laughs> a couple of so fact, at least that is cold they okay. don't believe in vowels there you go <laughs> fun fact of the day and then we also did indonesia which is just reverse of that <laughs> <laughs> so you know so okay. a little extra credit international internationally known <laughs> ludicrous all over the world all right so indonesia japan Sweden. Let's see oh. some more flags. Poland. Wait, we, we have Sweden. Dan, Dan, oh, Dan, Dan. that then that's the cue for your group to show. Oh, All right. Go. Go ahead, yeah. All right. Let's do Sweden. <laughs> oh. Hey, there's Sweden. Hey, there it is. Sweden. Oh. We need to wait. That's that's not your page. That's... Wait, hold on. Is that, is that what you're trying to present right now? <laughs> we made an entire website. Damn, we thought we could we get it. it all. All. Hey. Oh, sorry. I zoomed it way in so I could get the. Hey, you guys were <laughs> smid. Yeah. Damn. You know what? Wow. You get negative points, okay? <laughs> Give you extra assignments for fooling the whole class. Now wait, let's what? see what you let's see what you've done. Let's see the progress. Okay, so that's Sweden. Yeah, we know um, that's Sweden. But we want to see <laughs> and you want me to walk you through how we did it? That's so not what you did, for? though. What do you? Yeah, it is. Wait, the I think we can't see the screen. Are you? Oh, see the screen. oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sharing the wrong <laughs> screen, guys. Yeah, bro, I'm like, all right, he's, I thought he was going to stick to his guns this. the whole okay. time. That's Sweden. <laughs> okay, nice. that's what we did. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I was just no. sharing the other screen while we were working on it. I just thought you were just ignoring me completely. All right. Oh, no, I was just, okay. look, it is after five o'clock here. My brain is shut down. I it, Yeah, we are. I thought I met my match. Dan is just going to stand me up. Um, okay, no, well, this, this is nice. This is a good job. How'd you guys do it? How'd you guys divide this one up? So we did our... Uh, main kind of div with the uh 
yellow background and then built four blocks that had a different uh, different things we could call to effect. So we did four blocks with the background color here um, and used. Uh, so this is our two top blocks and this is our two bottom blocks uh, to get our, I don't know why we did this. It was a hodgepodge. Uh, we did it. <laughs> no, we it wasn't. Um, <laughs> then would you like to explain how we did it, Joan? Yes, yeah, so, um, okay. so we started off with the, <laughs> we started off with the color too that he's showing there in the CSS. That's the background color. So we decided to make the yellow the background color. And then we did, we wanted to um, have the color one, color one represents the first two, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but color one uh, is the first two blocks on the top. And then color three is the bottom two blocks on the, the bottom two blocks. So that allows us to at least um, edit uh, pretty quickly with the time that we had. But yes, yeah, so we started off with the yellow in the background and then we created the first two blocks on the top and then the bottom two blocks on the bottom. I mean, the bottom two blocks. Okay. And we just played with the, with the colors and the inline block to align them. Got it. And, yeah. Very nice. Okay, well, good job everyone in this group. Uh, and um, yeah, I really thought you were trying to pull my leg there. No, okay. but I was legitimately confused. <laughs> that, yeah. I was like, man, Dan, <laughs> why are you doing this? It's not funny anymore. <laughs> All right, next group, next group. Uh, I can go. Um, we did Texas's flag, but unfortunately, we couldn't get the star in time. That's what this background image is here for. Um, we identified the flag, so we had our baseline here, we made white, um, we, uh, we struggled a bit trying to get the uh, white and the red to the right was uh, the biggest uh, challenge we had, um, and eventually we had some help where we realized we could use margins to put them on the right side. Um, and yeah, we couldn't really figure out how to get the background image in there, we were still troubleshooting that, so for the star because there's no star in the blue. <laughs> that was a struggle. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I definitely have to go rewatch the lecture to uh, figure out what's going on there. Yep, and maybe add a whole border around so we know where the white is defined. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah. yeah. We had it uh, pink for while we were doing the star thing. Um, oh, we, we originally like had started like with a different color for the white because we couldn't see where the white was so we originally like before we, we changed it to white it was actually pink just so we could focus on where we're placing everything okay so okay. definitely uh uh i just hastily changed it back because we're still doing the image thing but definitely could have uh, added a border around it to make it easier to see yeah yeah, well, okay. That border would be nice. The star in the right place. You just need to figure out how to make the background image of stars. So maybe you want to take a few minutes after class to figure out how to do that. Get some practice yeah. in. Okay. All right. So nice job. You guys almost got it. Texas flag. I see it out everywhere here. What's the next one? This is us, huh? Who is that? All right. So here we go. Um, let me uh, let me get ready to screen share, but let me let me preface this by saying our flag was by far the most difficult one. Oh, um, <laughs> we got three colors. Oh. Only one other one other group had three colors, and nobody else did anything other than vertical horizontal lines other than Japan. So you tell this us is that. what we were going for. Okay, <laughs> we're going for Jamaica. Just let just brace know. yourselves. Going for Jamaica. No, don't show them what it looks like. Okay, now well, this is what we got. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Wait, what rough. Is that again? same colors. Right. Honestly, that is got our good. triangles in there, but it's it's a little off. So <laughs> they're positioned okay, <laughs> but the that's a bionicle. The, yeah, it's a bionicle. <laughs> <laughs> the widths and heights are a little off. So 
There you go. Um, let's see, I guess the HTML. Um, we got, so we started with, my goodness. We started <laughs> with uh, a group, started with a container. The container was the flag. We did a green top, a uh, black left, a black right, and a green bottom. That's how we organized it. And over here, um, we we were trying to figure out how to do diagonals or how to make a, a rectangle and like pivot it or something. But we ended up doing, we ended up like creating a div that only showed a part of the border that we wanted to be seen. So we did a whole lot of solid transparent borders. Yeah. And we did one like solid green border, and that's what you can see there. So what's creating the angle is invisible borders, basically. And mm -hmm. that gave us a lot of difficulties because the the borders won't allow other borders to won't allow other objects to like rest inside of it. So we had to go into had to go into the negative margins and kind of like just force it up in there. And mm -hmm. that was that was basically how we got to where we got to. If that makes any sense. Yep. I like your creativity and problem solving, putting negative margins. Normally we don't ever want to do that. You know? Yeah. We'll find some we'll define some rules on how we can overlap on Thursday, but I don't want us to use those rules generally, unless you're creating something very artistic like this, where you're making divs that are triangles on the same thing. Usually you would find an image and you wouldn't have to use CSS to make something like this, this complex, but it's good that we use our problem solving skills and we figured out something. Uh, and this is, this is pretty close. I'm thinking with that, like another, uh, 20 minutes, you guys would have got it perfect. So yeah, all the positioning is pretty much in place. Just got to mostly just squeeze the top green and bottom green and then stretch out the uh, left and right black ones and it'd be pretty close. Yeah. Yep. Good job, guys. Yep. I appreciate you guys challenging yourself and choosing something difficult. So let's get another group to present. All right, so we'll go. I just want to give y'all a disclaimer. Ours was a failure. It, it didn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> like it was, it was laying out. Yeah, we, we got stuck pretty bad uh, trying to source the image in there and center it. Yeah. Um, so making the heavenly flag, and for some reason, this image will not respond or move. <laughs> With that being said, we were making something completely original. Just didn't work out. I can't get this image to be centered no matter what I do. Well, I thought we I thought we centered it already together. No, mine wasn't really centered. That's all I was saying. Well, yeah, we, we were we in the same group. group. I have yeah. it I have it centered at the top on top of this bar, but we want this bar on top of the image and yeah. The image in the center of the page, we couldn't get it to do that. We can only get it to center in relation to the bar. Okay, we might have to work a little bit after hours to get that to work. But okay. If this is completely original. You should have said that this is how it's supposed to look. <laughs> and you just made it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were going for, man. <laughs> <laughs> you failed the second check as well. You could, you could have fooled me in the whole class. Um, no, but you guys will keep working on this. So, uh, all right, let's get one more group here to present. This would be our fourth presentation. Good job though, guys. I mean, you guys got the image, you guys got the bar. You just need to rearrange the, the things. Um, okay, let's have one more group. I know we have at least one more presentation to do. Matthew, did you, there we go. 
Whose is this? Ethan? Oh, it's me and Debbie. Okay. We have the French flag. Was that the first one? That, was that the Japanese I, I didn't flag? realize I was muted. <laughs> Sorry. So we did the French flag and we did the Japanese flag. Okay. Uh, I feel like we struggled more than we should have with the French flag. Uh, okay. Here's our parent divs, our ch child divs. And then we put our classes over here. But we we both struggled with putting them on the uh right column and also not having spaces in between so we had a different approach we use floats put the blue and the white on the, the left because it would always end up on the right and then for the japanese flag we struggled centering the circle but this is how we approached it so we have our parent div our child div and the border radius to make the circle. Then we set the margins to auto. And we also use the flex property, which I know we haven't gone over, but uh, if we play the frog game, we should learn about it. And yeah. then we find it to be in the center. Okay. I was not forbidding this, but I wasn't encouraging you guys to look into the flex because that's tomorrow's lesson. But let's see how it works. You had display flex and you said align item center. And did it center? Yeah, it's under the. But it's still kind of on the left hand side of the page. We want it to be in the center of the page, right? Talking about the flag or the circle? Oh, I see. There's a slight difference in hue between the white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I should have put a border around it. Yeah, sorry. Slight. It's like not that I'm colorblind, but my screen is colorblind. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I should have put a border around it. But yeah, that's pretty much all we did. I don't even see the border. Oh, did you? Uh, don't worry. Oh, no. It, you didn't put it. I thought you just did. Okay. <laughs> well, it looks good. Yeah. Now I see it centered in the. I just had to change. You, does everyone see the difference in color between like the grayish background, the whitish? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, okay. I think that ends our groups. Unless I skipped anyone. Did I skip anyone? Zach, did your groups pre uh, present? Yeah, we were the failure. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, it was good practice to put these blocks in different positions. Uh, we'll be doing something tomorrow very similar with the new rules that we'll be learning. For now, all the assignments that we have on our calendar have to do with using inline blocks and making the position of the blocks on the page aligned to our desired uh, view so we have button up most of us did this right add the buttons on a flag in this order we have plotting your blocks and after tomorrow's lesson i'm going to show you guys how we can divide things into this this see this how this could be a website this Are yellow you stuff to share your screen Oh my gosh, I appreciate it. I was presenting as if I was. Okay, so we here have the uh, plotting our blocks. Uh, this is the other assignment we should know how to do this. Imagine this as a flag itself, right? The divs inside the divs, how would you arrange them to be side by side next to each other using inline block? Button up here where we add a couple buttons. Um, and then we have the homework, which is to read through flex. Okay, if you do all the reading, then you can play this flex game. So tomorrow I expect a good amount of questions on flex. 
Today we just learned blocks. Uh, we created the flags. And uh, you guys did pretty good. Don't worry if you didn't complete the flag 100%. Just the practice is what we were hoping to gain. Okay, so let's get uh, let's get on with the day. Those groups that didn't finish the flags, we want to use the remaining time to go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll go ahead and open the breakout rooms. What's that music going on? My bad. Okay. 